Hello and welcome. Well, my first video was probably a little bit intense. It's going to be intense. This journey is going to be intense. It has to be intense. There has to be a fire that starts in you that goes right. Why hasn't anyone told me this yet? Because, you know, I tell you what, aside from everything else, this journey that I have been on, I have had to learn the hard way. I've had to learn the hard way. And it's been painful. And I'm hoping that you don't have to go through the same thing. I'm hoping you don't have to go through the same thing because it's too painful. And um, and also to sit in this sort of space of illusion. A lot of people are still in illusion. And Satan wants to keep it this way. That's why the volume has been turned on. That's why there is all the stuff that's going on. And even as we walk through time and supposedly finding a lot of different systems that look like they're going to be helpful for what we need to do futuristically, in the end, they all turn into a bubble of soap. A soap bubble. Poof. Off it goes. You know, some people will come to me and say, oh, you know, but I've done this and I've done that and I've fought the system and now I, you know, drive around without a thumb plant. <laughs> sure, it's possible that some people have found ways to, you know, basically fight certain things like fines and rates and... But remember, I said to you, this war goes far beyond than your stuff and taking control over your physical life, over your finances, and over your things. Far beyond. So let's go back to the story and how we got to here and how we got to this mess. Thanks be to Jesus. We have salvation in Christ. You know, some people have said to me a few times in groups I tried to just very gently mention some things in the hope that it would awaken people. And I've been abused. Uh, at times even, well, abuse is the word, really. Um, and people speak to you in a condescending manner sometimes because they don't know. Somebody had said to me once, Hey, listen, uh, why don't you shut up? Because there is no savior that's going to come and save us. We're going to have to save ourselves. Yeah, that's what I've heard some people say. We are here to get this thing fixed. Okay. We who? Please, just calm your mind down for a second. Take a deep breath. And then let's look at this in common sense. Seven billion people on the planet. Seven billion ideas, seven billion thoughts, approximately. God knows how many different cultures, how many different school of thoughts. There's two people in a relationship that can't even agree with each other. Two brothers and two sisters that cannot even agree with each other. I am inside these groups all the time and all I hear constantly and consistently, and by the way, this has been going on for 20 years, is constant debates of difference of opinions and it's like this and it's like that and I think this and I think that and no, you don't know this and no, you don't. It's almost comical. I actually call it tragicomical. It really is. When you stop and look at it, it's tragicomical. It is, it is comical, but it's so tragic at the same time. That people are under this spell that they're actually getting somewhere, that we're getting somewhere. Seven billion ideas. I still haven't found two people that can agree. And even when they can agree, they disagree. 
they agree on something and they disagree on something else. Again, a double-minded man is unstable in all these ways. All you will find is instability of thought. That's the strategy and the craftiness of Satan himself, who knows the human mind, knows that we are volatile and vulnerable, and that when we don't have a stable mind, we can be influenced by just about anything. By just about anything. Sounds a little bit like truth. Oh, yeah, I'll try it. I'll grab that. Then you hear somebody say something else. No, it's like this. Oh, no, it's like that. Tragic comical. Really, it is. It is because it's so... The issue is so much deeper than what's going on. No, I cannot free you from your problems at the moment. If that's what you think I'm doing here with you, we are, we are done with this conversation. But I can show you something that might help you to move away, move out of this madness that we're in and really put things in perspective because at the end of the day, we have to know what fights to what what fight what battles to fight and what battles not to fight what are real battles to fight because otherwise you could be chasing your tails and what good is that going to do what good is that going to do to you so are we really going to free ourselves on this earth by ourselves. Is humanity really shifting consciousness and we're all coming together and we're all going to unite into this camaraderie and let's do this and let's get... Do you really believe that? Seven billion people are actually all of a sudden going to wake up one morning and all agree with each other. Well, just have a look and see what happened during COVID. What happened during COVID? What was the result of that? if not more separation, more division. Apparently over 5 billion people agreed to take the, you know, the, um, the genetic experiment. They were convinced. They were fighting against the non-vaxxers. They were considering the non-vaxxers, people like myself, that, that, that we were dangerous to society and humanity. In some countries, people used to get beaten in the street for not wearing a mask. Oh yeah, that's happening. We're all uniting and going somewhere, fighting the system. Don't get me wrong, there are a lot of people out there that are bringing very, very truthful information. It is what it is. It's exactly what's going on. There's a big deception going on. I'm not knocking that. But there is another deception that's going on that's behind the deception that's going on. And that's what people are most missing the point with. Because what's happening as well is that a lot of these movements that are actually stepping up for freedom fighting are also part of the same problem. Please, I know, I don't want to put a damper in your, on your journey, but understand this, that if you don't get this, you're gonna chase your tail. I can sit down with you and even have a one-to-one -one conversation and I'm happy to hear all your frustrations, all the stuff and all your debates, and I, I can assure you that I will debunk each and every one of them. I have been on this journey for 25 years. I have yet to see a coherent, cohesive breakthrough as a collective on this planet. And even though there might be some little victories, I'm not saying they're not. Some people are winning in court. Some people are doing these little things. Unless you know scriptures, you will not know what's happening and you, know, you won't know what's coming. You said to me, well, how does this relate? I will speak of the legality of this book once we get into it. It's part of the series. But first, let me tell you this, the reliability, biblical scripture, as such, that the Bible has over two and a half thousand prophecies on it. Over two thousand of them have all, can I underline and bold, all come to pass in accuracy of how they were written about. So we have in our hands a map of truth that is unmatched, unmatched unquestionable, unbiased, and it's undeniable. So if we have a book that has created a blueprint and a map for humanity, and most people don't understand who we are, who God is, who Christ is, 
who we are, why what's happening is happening, what are the reasons why it's happening, and what's going to happen. We're going to go round in circles like little madmen, because believe me, the, by the way, the, the fire is actually go to, going to turn up, and the frog is going to wiggle just a little bit more. <laughs> if you don't know what to do and what this says, if you don't know what the Bible says, if you don't know what Scripture says, then you will take on board everything that everybody else says because it sounds a bit true. And of course, what is the biggest issue that we have at the moment is that we are all wishing for something together. We want the same thing. We want peace. We want freedom. And we want to be able to live in harmony with ourselves and others. We want this suffering to end. And the devil knows this. God knows this and he's already offered the map and said yes of course because ultimately you are going to be reconciled to me because you're my people I love you but here's the map that's how you're gonna get to what you want don't try fiddling yourself and wiggling yourself into all these other directions because otherwise you won't find it you won't and even if you find temporary relief just like taking an aspirin or taking a Panadol or just sticking a band-aid over a little cut eventually the cut's going to be there and the biggest part of the problem is the ultimate part of this plan which i mentioned in my first video this war is not just a physical war for the stuff and the things and the freedom of the human being it is far deeper than that it is at a soul level not just planetary so we know, for example, that through artificial intelligence and, you know, the globalization and the monetization, uh, global monetization through, the Bible has already told us this is coming. If none of you have read scriptures, let me help you. Revelation 13, from 15 to 18. Let me read it for you. Let me read Revelation for you so that we're going to be on the same page for a change. Let me read Revelation because until I started delving into scriptures, I was also hovering in the dark. And I also thought that humanity is raising consciousness and Gaia is shifting consciousness. And oh, we're becoming these enlightened beings. Are you kidding me? What enlightened beings are we becoming? Aside from more, the Bible says at the end of days, people become, will become disobedient, lovers of money, lovers of themselves, scornful, disobedient, selfish. Uh, take a bit of a look around and you tell me how enlightened you think we're becoming. Are we becoming more loving? Are we becoming more caring? Are we becoming truly more for one another? Look, we have to stop telling ourselves stories because otherwise we can't go anywhere, okay? We cannot go anywhere if we, if we go to stay in self-deception. I already said this. deception. There is deception going on on the planet, which is a satanic deception. The biggest problem is that Satan is using also the human mind that is not trained for battle in the in, in, in the in the spiritual realm to basically deceive itself. And so people are not just dealing with deception in the world, they're also dealing with self-deception. And that's what the problem is. Because when you're self-deceived, you think that what's true is true and what's not true is not true and then, and then you're kind of stuck. But let me just tell you what Revelation 13 says. Revelation 13 from 15 to 18. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he caused it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in the right forehead. And that, and this is the key. And this is the key. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that had understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred and sixty-six. Six, six. Six. It's the mark of the beast. It's the number of Satan himself. 
What is this mark? Coming. It's coming. So why do we need to know this? Like I said, I'm not here to preach to Mangalum to you, but we need to stop being self-deceived about what is possible, what's not possible. How can we gain authority in Christ? What is our authority here on earth at the moment? How can we dismantle the authority that was given to Satan back in the Garden of Eden over you know, a few thousand years ago? Oh, by the way, this book was written over to, in, in, in through time. And this is over 2,000 years old. There was no technology back then. What is it that we cannot buy? It started with COVID. Oh, you can't do this. You can't work. You can't go to the supermarket. You can't go to the, you can't go to the pub. You can't go to the restaurant. You can't travel without this. At one point they made it. It was a green passport they were calling it. Please, let's wake up everybody and people that say that this is just a story have not understood the danger that they're in so let's not play silly buggers this is not about just taking authority in court and trying to win a little case and try and get your house or try and not pay your rates part of these things are also part of the distraction or in the agenda of satanic agenda that's why I want to wake people up to discernment. I am not suggesting that some of the people out there are not well intentioned to help, to find things, but you tell me in the end if you have been on this journey like I have, I can tell you without a shadow of doubt that at the beginning of my journey, after the shock factor because you do get shocked into the system when you recognize what the hell has been going on, and it is literally hell, because it's like living hell on earth what, you, what, have, what have we been subjected to, this control and manipulation and how they've convoluted the systems. And for you to try and unravel this, you've got to go into all the different complexity of it all. It's true, we have a constitution. It's supposed to be a constitution that is abiding to this, to the law that is, you know, been, been sanctioned by kings on this planet that was given by, by God. But now we have a corrupt system. The kingdoms are corrupt. The kingdom of England, they're corrupt. The commonwealth, corrupt. Everything is corrupt. So nothing is under the jurisdiction of God. Please, let's understand this. Why the judicial system is corrupt? Because they are corrupt. They don't follow this anymore. You will not even find this in the, in the, in, you, you, you will not even find this in the courts. And you can bring this in the courts if you like. They probably won't listen to you. But the authority that I'm talking about is a bit different. Okay. Because we've got to battle this in a way that we actually have victory. You want to have victory. You don't want to stay in the losing side of the fence. Otherwise, you're constantly going to be losing. And even if you manage to, you know, get out of a fine or whatever, what are you going to do? Revelation 13, a, you know, saying this is coming. And look, it was just around the corner because when COVID happened, that's exactly what was happening. I don't know if you were vaccinated, but I wasn't. And I can assure you that lots of doors were closed to me. My jobs were closed to me. The restaurants were closed to me. I couldn't go places. I couldn't travel. Unless I say, yes, put this thing in my arm. That was not the mark of the beast just yet. Some people think it was. I pray to God. Now, some people say that it's already genetically manipulated your DNA. And there is a good possibility that that's already happening. However, it is not necessarily the mark of the beast. Because, in, because the Bible is also very specific. It keeps going with other type of information that it's very specific as to what the mark is. It is going to be under your skin. So most likely it's the microchip. How far are we from it? Isn't everyone talking about digital ID? So are we still going to fight to try and figure out how not to pay our rates and how not to pay this? I'm not saying, we, I'm not suggesting we're not supposed to do these things. Please understand this because I'm also trying to find better ways to live financially because it's a mess at the moment. They're constantly eroding your finances and your resources because that's what they want to do. The satanic agenda is one where they don't want you to have any peace and tranquility because if you don't have peace and tranquility, you're not going to wake up to what's happening. Most importantly, you won't have to you won't find people like me and listen to people like me saying, hey, wake up. We have a problem and it's coming. So when people say to me, oh, we're all going to combat this and we're all, there's not going to be one being that's going to save you. I beg to differ. I beg to differ. 
because the Bible says that we have a second coming of Jesus Christ. And then now, then eventually we'll have to go into the fullness of the story, the crooks of the crooks of the matter of the story of why God has sent us remedy 2000 years ago, why it is connected to the legality of what happened to us as humans, what our predicament was before. We were under the law of Moses, unfortunately a fallen species with tainted DNA from these two beings who really stuffed up. They really made it difficult for everyone else. And I beg you bring anyone to me and say, why do we have a God that's making all these horrible things to happen to humanity? Hang on a minute. Please understand that this was not God's doing. And none of, the, um, none of this badness is God's doing. It's humans doing. We did it to ourselves. What God's been trying to do is actually to rectify this for us for millennia. Still hasn't managed to do that. And in fact, we're still waiting for the end result of this, for this will and testament to be completely executed, which will come very soon, because it is a will and a testament of God. God has made a will. Jesus Christ is the executor. You, us, are the beneficiaries. However, in any will and testament, you can have a will, an executor, but if, if the beneficiary does not accept, you can never benefit from the gift and the inheritance of the gift, which is basically what this is. God tells us what it is. Salvation, eternal life, removing us from this hell <laughs> eventually those who accept it and please understand this there is a heaven as there is an earth at the moment i know we cannot see the heavens as there is a hell it's an unspeakable place of sorrow that only those who will choose to go there will go there and people that say, I don't believe in hell. I don't believe in the devil. I don't believe in God. We can only pray for them. We can only pray for these people that say such things that are, there is no word for it. It's very naive. I don't want to use any other offensive word to say there is no hell. Jesus knew about it. It is mentioned on scriptures. He speaks of it. The remedy is him and why is him. So our predicament before God decided to send the remedy is that for millennia, for about 4,000 years, God tried to reconcile his people to himself. It's all in the Old Testament. So all the story of the Old Testament is God trying to reconcile his people to himself through the altars and through this and then sacrifices, trying to teach people how to behave in a certain manner. Never did they ever listen. At one point, even God sort of thought, why did they even create this humanity? They're just not going to happen. They're not going to reconcile themselves. They're rebellious. Humanity is rebellious and more so than ever now. Satan is having a ball at the moment at making humans transgress every single day. There is nothing anymore that even resembles normality. We can touch subjects that probably annoy a lot of people, you know, because they're so embedded into this freedom. I'm becoming free to do what I want. Yes, and teach your children that you look at the child, you say, doesn't matter, we don't know what you are. So you have a child that's a male or a female, you tell them, doesn't matter, you just choose your gender. I mean. I mean, it's, I'm speechless. You cannot even, like anybody that has even a little, little bit of sense in this can see that there is, it's absolute madness. Men that are becoming women, women that are becoming men, men that are saying that they can have children and then they go and have, the other day I saw a man had a baby. No, he was not a man, he was a woman. He had ovaries and, and a uterus, but you know, he transgendered himself into looking outside like a man and then he has a belly and then they write up in the thing. He, 
a man has had a child. No, a man will never have a child. He does not have ovaries. He does not have a uterus. So let's not confuse what the truth is. The truth is that no man will ever have a child naturally. And no man will ever be a woman. Let's also clarify that one day because you can only have a chromosome, two X's or a Y and an X. And if you have one or the other, you cannot have both. Truth is truth. You cannot kind of mix it. You can't mix it under water and then just with oil and water and then say it's, it's mixed. That's the confusion that's being created at the moment. The madness is going from bad to worse because the humanity has gone into total rebelliousness because of this confusion that Satan has brought in. So for 4,000 years, God has been trying to reconcile his people to himself. Couldn't do it. He saw that we were a fallen people. And we continued to be that way until he had so much compassion. John 3.16. John 3.16. Please understand this. If you don't understand this, we cannot move forward. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish and have eternal life. Now, Jesus Christ is the remedy. The Bible says in John, I believe 5, first in John, John 1, 1, it says the word, the, in the beginning there was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word, not, nothing that was made, but the word that was made, and then I think in, chapter, in verse 5 it says, And the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. So Jesus Christ was sent by God. In fact, he was God incarnate so that he could be himself the remedy that we could never achieve, no matter how hard we try in the flesh. And then something had to happen. Until that point, the jurisdiction was with Satan and humanity could not take it back because until now, None of us have really understood how to do that. So Jesus came and he was the lamb without blemish. In other words, it had to be the being that was pure enough to be able to be a new covenant for humanity. And the new covenant means that it had to be without blemish, without sin, without the taintedness of the DNA. So Jesus Christ came as the son of God and his DNA pure, meaning that now he is the second Adam, the firstborn of a humanity, and the new DNA for humanity. Why did Jesus Christ have to die on the cross and spill his blood? Because it is only through the blood that holds the DNA. And Jesus Christ has to spill every tiny little drop because of love and mercy for humanity. And also that same blood was to be the signature upon the legal document that is scriptures, the will, the testament, to seal it and make it a valid document for humanity, a valid matter of fact. The blood of Jesus Christ is the signature on the legal document that is the will of the Father, the New Testament, that makes the new covenant, now we're talking legal here, between humanity and God. Between humanity and God. There is no other covenant, there is no other scripture, there is no other religious ideology, there is none. Jesus Christ is the new covenant for humanity. He is the second born, no blemish, pure DNA. And if you're not with Christ, then you're not in right standing with anything. You can go and shout to the, from the rooftops. You can go and shout in the courts and say, this is my right. I am a constitutional law. I am a living man and being, I'm accountable to God. If you want to be a living man or woman accountable to God, you must understand who God 
is and who and how to be accountable to him. You can't just wave a piece of paper and say the Constitution says that when you know nothing about how to be in right standing with God. And until such time that you repent and understand your predicament as a human being, that you're coming from a faultless, from a fault, not faultless, from a fault lineage of fallen people and DNA, and you don't accept through repentance and then coming through the gratitude or understanding who Christ is and what he's holding at the moment for you, you can never be in right standing. Don't go seek righteousness in courts. Don't go seek righteousness in front of police. And oh, you may through arrogance and whatever and a couple of little things that you've learned about how to read a few acts and things to, to make your way out and say, ah, oh, you know, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm the authority. There is no authority without Christ Jesus. And your soul is not saved without Jesus. When I said signed, sealed, and delivered, I mean just that. If you're, if you're not taking on the signature and the seal, because the Bible speaks that there's going to be two seals. One belongs to God and his people. And he says, I, have got, I will have them written in the palm of my hands. God will have you written in the palm of your hands because he's taking you into his righteousness. Only through Christ Jesus and through the faith that we have in Christ and what he's done. Can you be now then adopted into the kingdom? And your DNA will be part then of the lineage of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ has then done the finished work on the cross where he then, because he resisted Satan all the way to the end unto death, total obedience to the Father, he took back the keys from Satan. And so therefore now, those who are in Christ Jesus, the Bible says, therefore now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So before we stand before courts that are corrupt, before we stand before situations, we must understand how to stand in the right standing before God. And you cannot do that if you're standing in arrogance and pride and don't know who God is, what his word is saying, who Jesus Christ is, and where authority really comes from. Because authority is the transference that Jesus Christ gave to us because of who he is. It's a difficult concept to understand. Please understand. I, 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 I know that a lot of you that have walked a lot of different types of journeys in life and personal freedom, I'm undoing this and I'm doing that, will find this very hard to digest. That a true authority is in Christ, in who he is, not in who you are. You cannot save yourself. You cannot save yourself. Please understand this. You can go before a judge and play silly buggers and maybe win a little case, but you cannot save your soul. You cannot save your soul without Christ. So therefore, we need to acknowledge that the true authority and standing is in Christ and for Christ alone. And somebody said, why would I want to give my power to a being? We're talking about God himself incarnate, the creator of all things. Who do you think you are that you can say, why would I want to think to give it my... You're nobody. They've got the sides to take your breath in one second, let go. The son of a friend of mine just a few days ago, heart attack. Three minutes. Where was his authority? Where was his power? Where was his self-empowerment? What happened to that? Who is in charge? Who is truly in charge of your life, of your breath, of your life, of your soul? Your creator. Your creator. Your creator is the one in charge. Of course, you, you have free will to direct to play in this playground that God has given us, which we call the earth. But who is in charge? So please don't come with arrogance and pride and say to me, oh, you know, I don't need to give my power. Oh, humanity did give authority and power to Satan, and most people are still subjugated with that. And they don't even know it. That they're actually playing the game of Satan all the way to hell. Because the mark of the beast is coming, and I want to see people get out of that. If you don't know who Christ is and you don't know what to do at that time, you can wave whatever pieces of paper you want. They're not going to stop. They're not going to stop. Please understand this. We're not talking about just anybody. They won't stop. 
because that's how it's gonna play out and that's why you have to know who you are and that's why you have to know where to stand and how to stand in the right standing in the right authority in the right authority in Christ so that you can stand there are different scriptures that God teaches how to stand in this authority and the fact that this is a spiritual warfare more than a physical warfare so if we don't know what we're looking at you will have a problem you will have a problem because if you don't believe what I'm saying all you'll have to do is wait a little bit of time because it's not that far off because the Bible speaks about the end times it's given us already all the clues about what the end times look like if you've never entered scriptures if you've never been blessed by the grace of God if you've not been saved if you don't have the Holy Spirit to teach you you'll be following you know every Tom Dick and Harry all the while the Bible is very clear hey listen this is happening and then you have all these people that are going oh we're gonna save the world I have been in groups and people basically will do that they'll basically say things along oh, if we unite we're gonna fix this and I say do you know scriptures they are prophetic every single one of them has come to pass God is who he says that he is the Bible says so Jesus he is who he says that he is Satan is who he is who God says that he is the mark of the beast is coming now you can believe on it or not you can think that I'm just basically talking whatever and if you really believe that a bunch of people will raise up and we will find freedom from one day to the next and do our own thing it's okay you can believe that go ahead and follow that trail and see where it takes you because I've been on this journey for 25 years and I've yet to find the person that's completely free and their soul is saved and they're living in harmony but really true freedom comes from first from a place within where God teaches us what true freedom is there will be coming very hard times people and in these hard times there will be afflictions okay you think this is doom and gloom well it's not that it's doom and gloom it's like there are some things that we can do at the moment but my main um, let's just say um, what I'm praying about at the moment is that people will awaken to stop and really start looking at things and then start applying wisdom to these situations where they're not just running around like chooks without a head on and wiggling here and wiggling there thinking that they're getting somewhere that you're getting somewhere I'm getting to this end result where I'm gonna be free do you know what we're up against we're not even up against systems we're up against demonic forces I'm going to be free have you heard the satanic agenda the 2030 you will be happy and you'll own nothing and be happy how long do you think it's going to take them to implement that they have all the resources they have all the systems they have say okay people will basically raise yeah your yeah, people raise and they, they wiggle a little bit and I tell you what usually happens when that happens which is what we have noticed that happens first of all during the two years of COVID let's let's just take a let's just do an overview about the last two and a half years and then you can tell me if you what I'm saying I'm just basically inventing things okay so COVID hit and then the first two hard it was for three months straight there was this psychological manipulation of terrorizing humanity literally it was it was a terrorist attack there was not another word for it they psychologically attacked people that was this threat that was going to basically kill everybody and then once they got the human into that sort of frenzy fear then they started introducing the solution oh we've got the solution vaccinate everybody and then they did a campaign that was just it was just merciless campaign of like you've got to do this because this is the only solution shortly into that six months into that all the stuff started coming out although it's maybe it's not really quite the solution because it doesn't really protect you and it didn't take very long to figure out that it wasn't really a solution they terrorized everybody found the supposed found the solution implemented a whole heap of systems of control little you know everything is on your app at the moment control this manipulate that and then by that point everybody was basically getting a little bit uneasy and there were all the freedom fighters and yes we did take to the streets yes you can say to me oh look what we did we came and we 
basically made a big thing and, and see? Yeah, I see. What I see is that what they usually do is they already know that people are going to uprise. So what they do is they turn the volume up, they turn the heat up all the way to the point that they can implement what they want to implement and then they will just cool it down. Let's cool it right down. And they did, but not too much. Please, not too much. So what did they do? They cooled down the COVID thing. Now it's okay, now you can go out without a mask. It's all good. You can do this. You can go back to work. It's all good. So back to normal, the new normal. No sooner they took away the, the frenziness. Let's play this one now. Volume up. Interest rate ups. It's interest rate ups. People are starting to now get financially distressed. So you tell me if you think that people uprising means that we're winning by the time people uprise they already knew this was going to happen they had it all nicely planned and they let also people do all of that to make people look that yes we're doing this so we have all of these other things that are happening in the courts and oh they were supposed to arrest all these politicians and they were all supposed to be jailed and they were supposed to be killed none of that happened because they're all in cahoots with each other and I could tell you stories and over stories of how I've been fighting the systems. I've been, you know, calling to attention the politicians and calling to attention a lot of people. They're all in cahoots with each other. And the ones that could be helping some people eventually become greedy. They become sort of, a, you know, power hungry. So they like the attention and so forth. Listen, I'm going to do these videos and I'm just going to put them out there for whoever wants to listen to them. I don't need to be doing any of those things. I'm here as a truth bearer. I'm here to share the mysteries. I'm a steward of the mysteries of God and that's what I do. And some of the things I'm going to say you're not going to like because basically the narrative has been very different. People are not going to come start coming and telling us, listen, this war, excuse me, is far deeper than uh, simply a, uh, a physical war for your stuff, for your things, for your personal freedom, for your financial freedom, for your physical freedom. This is a war for your soul. Satan wants your soul. God is trying not to let him, which is why we're still here. Most of us that know, know exactly what we're going through. So these birthing pains that we're going through, most of them would be unnecessary if humanity had already woken up and come to and come to Christ and come to God because ultimately God wants to be done with this thing we all want to be done with this thing but unfortunately we can't because there's still a lot of people that need to come to Christ and I'm really hoping that I can have at least a tiny little bit of input into helping people do just that I will continue in another video because we're already at 43 minutes. I hope you got something from this video, I really do. And I really hope that you felt that this is something different that you've never come across because I can honestly say to you that we really need to be mindful. This is not just any time on earth. This is not just any time for humanity. And without this piece of information, people are hovering in the dark and also, um, you know, having a huge sort of marathon for what they believe is their own personal freedom, which is also part of the problem because there's nothing wrong with wanting to have some kind of personal freedom. But you need to understand as well, I, I guess, what battles, what battles to fight and what not to fight and how to fight them effectively. Because if you don't know your opponent and your enemy, and your enemy is not the government, your enemy is not the Rothschild, the Rockefellers, your enemy is not the... Vatican, uh, I mean, they, you know what I mean by that, they, they, they are, they are the, the physical entities that are manipulating humanity, but it is far deeper than that, and if you don't have tools in the spirit and understand how to access the, the legal system that God has given us and the authority God has given us, you'll be in a much deeper hot seat in some time to come. And maybe what I'm saying now, you can dismiss it and you can say it's just whatever, but believe me, it'll all come to pass in a very short amount of time in the near future. That what I am saying is so, not because I'm saying so, I don't want you to believe me. 
I am nobody. I'm just the messenger, okay? God is the one that says what's going to happen. And you can't change that. People can't change that just because they think they can. Understand this, we have to humble ourselves before God and say, Yes, Lord, teach us, guide us, show us. That's all. Father, thank you for this moment. Thank you for this transmission, Lord. Father, please let the listener uh, that has spent time listening to this uh, be in tune with your word, Lord. Send the Holy Spirit to guide them, Lord. Send the Holy Spirit to minister to them so that they can find that this truth, Lord, resonates with their heart and their mind and that it will help them to advance in your kingdom so that they can step into the authority of who you are, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this transmission. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. I'll talk to you in my next video. Shalom.